Uh, so welcome everyone. This is the last free Bill Luis webinar. Why? Because Bill has got too much work going on that he can't be doing these and we've decided to put it into the Coach Me Bill site. Please, when you get a chance, folks, take a look at the CoachMeBill.com site and sign up. Uh, the first session, formal one, is going to be October 7th, Tuesday. That's two weeks from tonight. Same time, same channel. $99 a month. Registration is limited. What do we mean by that? We have absolutely no idea at this point. We don't know how many of you will sign <laughs> up. And so uh, what we'll do is figure out, uh, but we will make sure that uh, we're in a situation where we can get everyone's questions answered. And Bill, quickly tell people before we get started, why does this make sense for someone at virtually any level in the voiceover business? Because uh, I've been at every, virtually every level of the voiceover business. I built this from scratch, so I understand virtually every aspect and, um, and love to help and coach people wherever they're at to get to where they want to get. Okay, well, that being said, so again, folks, here is the, uh, and I'll show it that way. You can see it in this, the Coach Me Bill site. So um, I, sent, I found a couple of questions that already in, you know, in, in the queue here that I wanted to get started with. And um, I kind of was interested in, 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 in a couple of things. And uh, Trevor was first in line and says, Bill, I was hoping that you could relive your first months of formal voiceover business efforts like how your cold calls turn around materials. Just give them a brief example of what happened when you first got started. It was exciting because I had no idea what I was doing, and so everything was fresh and new. And and it, it was me always asking myself the question, how do I get myself, how do I get my demo in front of the right people? And so I spent a lot of time, Trevor, making phone calls to production companies. Uh, I signed up with Voice123 and Voices.com, and I auditioned as often as I could. I had a lot of time to audition because I wasn't doing much recording at the time. So I made a lot of phone calls. I was always researching, trying to find production companies sending out emails, introducing them to my website, my demos, auditioning, and I, in, in a nutshell, that's what I did all day long. Excellent. Now, Don asks a question, and I think I have an answer for it. I wonder if yours will be the same. Uh, he read a website saying you shouldn't use any free email services like Gmail. Uh, I don't buy it. Everybody, that's, Gmail's one of the most commonly used uh, pro and respected email programs. So the answer is don't worry about it, Don. Yeah. Um, when first starting out, question from uh, Avelia, Avelia, I think. Uh, when first starting out, do you recommend GarageBand or Audacity? Why not go right to Pro Tools? Well, for someone like me, I'd have no idea how to use it. But what's your answer? I would say you don't, you don't, you will never need Pro Tools. It's, uh, it's, it's overkill. It's like, it's like shooting a hamster with a shotgun. You just don't need that much horsepower. Audacity, but I would use Audacity because it's even it's simpler than even GarageBand. And you simple is best. All you're doing is dry voice recording and editing. That's all you need. And by the way, I've coached Bill to make his answers short and pithy, just like he will in the paid version of this. So we'll get as many questions answered as possible. How am I doing? Next, yeah, we're doing great. All right. Regarding audiobooks, in what format do you receive copy? Via attachment in an email or how? Uh, yes, and also uh, sometimes uh, if, you, if I'm doing the work through ACX, uh, they're made available for download, but usually in either PDF or Word document format, either or. Sounds good. One from Cheryl here. If she signs an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, can, can she still use a portion of the job without the name of the company or proprietary info in her demo? Uh... As long as you take out anything that would not point back to the company or mention specifically any service or product, which makes it almost unusable, I, I would not suggest even, there's no need to, there's so much stuff available out there, you don't need to use material that you, that you signed an NDA for. Uh, just go to YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, go to yeah. Here, Paul Carter's got a good question. Um, first, a good comment. He said, just FYI, I landed two jobs just this week. Big thanks to you and all your support videos, tutorials. Thank you very much. Awesome. Brian Hansen says, I have a demo that's been reviewed by industry professionals, and they've said it's great. Since the last webinar, I've joined Voices.com, done over 150 auditions, and it's crickets. What do I do now? By the way, well, you keep auditioning, for one thing, because it took me over 100 auditions to get my first job. There's the misconception that, well, if I have a great demo, then people are going to line up. Well, no, but you do give yourself the best opportunity. Um, you need to make sure, just because you did a great demo doesn't mean you can audition well. 
So those are two different things, Fred. First of all, you have to keep in mind. You may Absolutely. need coach in your auditioning so that you audition as well as you sounded in in your demo. And it may be that you're auditioning. You know, I don't know what you're auditioning for. Maybe you're auditioning for the wrong jobs. And um, and that only comes with time and experience. So right now, just keep auditioning for everything you can. Don't be discouraged because through this, you'll A, get better, and B, you'll figure out where your strengths are and where they're not. Makes sense to me. So Dan now asks, as a voiceover noob without any experience, would it be a good idea to start out by doing some voiceover works for local nonprofits and not charging them a dime? Well, just because you're not charging people doesn't mean they'll want to use you. Keep that in mind. I think some people have the misconception that, that cheap or free means people will use you. Uh, most people put very little value in something that ha- doesn't have a price attached to it. So Now, may, can I make a suggestion? In, in the consulting business, what we used to say is, if you ever did work like that for free, you would send them an invoice and mark it for the amount of dollars and mark it fee waived. Yes. Yes, I like that. Uh, right. but, but if somebody's willing to take you on for free just for experience, I see nothing wrong with that at all. So, yes, I would do it. Sure. Mm, let's see. What are some of your best tips for creating a stunning profile slash website for passive marketing? I guess that means if people come to you. Well, here's the thing. Uh, website is one of your key marketing tools. Remember this. And Fred, I know Fred believes this as well. And that is that every marketing activity should have one primary objective. The goal of your website is this, and this alone, to get somebody to click play and listen to your demo. Everything leads to that. Everything else is a distraction. So that being said, keep your website simple. Make sure you have a great demo. Make sure you have your contact information. um, And, you know, you may want to support your argument, so to speak, by having a brief bio. And by the way, only talk about things that are relevant to voiceover. Nobody, and if I may give a quick example here, it's like going, if you go interview for a job and you give them your resume and your resume talks only about your academic credentials, what that says is you have no experience. So don't go in your website and talk about the voiceover classes and the training you've had and, and what you, you know, what your degree in college was. Nobody cares. All they want to know is voiceover related. If you have nothing to say, don't say anything, but make sure that all roads point to that demo. That is the single most important element of your website. How fast do you think our computers need to be and or do you suggest using an external drive to save files if you save them? Well, those are two separate issues, but you definitely need an external drive. I would also recommend using uh, duplicating and saving to the cloud. So I keep things on an external hard drive and then I duplicate that on the cloud. In terms of horsepower or, you know, a CPU of, of your computer, it does. you don't need a brand new cutting edge computer. I literally have a computer that I occasionally use that is an old Dell XP. It's about seven years old, runs Windows XP, and it works perfectly fine with an older version of Adobe Audition. So you can use a pretty old computer. Tracy Lindley asks, do you ever use watermarking? How do you decide if it's needed? Watermarking is, uh, for those who may not know, it's a a sound you put on a recording that makes it virtually unusable by the person who gets it so they don't steal your work. I have never used watermarking. Um, I, you know, watermarking is a good way to annoy a client, a potential client, because a client needs to hear your work and put it up against their video to see how it all works. And if you have an annoying sound every five seconds... It's a huge distraction. So my philosophy is if they steal it, they steal it. I operate on offense, not on defense. I'm not going to worry about what they do. I'm going for the job. So that's the way I'm wired. That's the way I work. That's the way I'm able to build a sizable business. Okay, so John Grimes is asking something that was related to future sessions where we do these in a paid version. Will future sessions have a theme or be entirely question directed? As a general rule, John, future sessions will be entirely dependent on what questions you have because our goal will be to answer every single question you have every two weeks or as many as we possibly can. And yes, they will be recorded and archived for you to go back and listen to as many times as you want if you are a quote unquote member. But that being said, future sessions will occasionally have a theme because Bill every once in a while bumps into somebody who has incredible knowledge in, in a specific area and he may bring them into the picture to yep. help out. Specific areas. Already lining those folks up. Is it, should, I, should I mention who we have for the for the uh, for the next webinar? Yeah. Well, this yeah. I mean, or no? uh, yeah. I think that you can tease it a little bit in that we have a very, very well known, well respected person who does fill in the blank work. Bill. Well, she's one of the the voices on League of Legends. 
She's like three of the characters in that game. She's also done ki- Disney characters, um, stuff from Mattel, Barbie, American Girl, Sega, Toys R Us, Nickelodeon, uh, Discovery, PBS Kids, Hallmark, Hasbro, Leapfrog, Fisher Price. She's uh, from Los Angeles, and she's very, very, very good. Yeah, and so occasionally there will be people on that, but the main goal in each of those sessions will be to answer all of your questions that relate to the major topics, be it uh, specific performance issues, issues regarding marketing, because Bill's goal in all of these sessions will be to help you get as much work and make as much money as possible. Would you agree? Absolutely. I mean, that's the bottom line. Okay. Uh, Eric's got a good question. Uh, If the copy says, you will or I will, do you change it to you'll or I'll to sound more conversational? I never change the copy. Never change the copy. People are paid to do that, and that's not our job as voice talent. Blaine Beeler asks, Bill, to clarify, when you record like a short commercial, do you do multiple takes in one recording and then go back and edit out what you don't want, or do you do separate recorded takes? Hey, Blaine, usually the, the way that I do it, I, I normally I'll record it once and then I'll just listen to it, see what it sounds like. Sometimes I'll even edit it so I get a sense of the timing of it, because if it's a 30-second commercial and I'm, and I'm reading at 33, then I need to speed up a little bit. Then I'll go back and I'll do it again, and I'll have a good sense of pacing and timing. And what I do is I'll read each line till I like it. Sometimes, you know, I may read the whole thing through without going back and redoing anything. But let's say, uh, like I'm looking on the screen right now, it says, welcome to the last free Bill DeWeese webinar. And I, and I don't like that. I'll go back. Welcome to the last free Bill DeWeese webinar. Nah. Welcome to the last free Bill DeWeese webinar. Awesome. Then I move on. And I keep doing each line until I like it. And then I go back and take out the ones I don't like. That's the way I do it. Good. Gerald Nicholson asks, concerning diction, should one strive for perfect diction, like I have, for example? Will it qualify you or disqualify you? <laughs> Gerald, you know, it's so funny. I had a conversation with one of my students about this today. Um, I, we actually had a re- dem- his demo recording session today, and he has, he has impeccable diction. It can actually work against you. Um, if you're doing long-form narration work, having good diction, you, I mean, you want to have good diction, but you don't want to over-enunciate on commercials. Otherwise, it takes out the human personal factor. It makes you sound like a paid professional, which is the last thing you want to sound like. Clients don't want paid professional sounding people. What they want are people who can compel other people. I was once in a recording session, if I may share a quick story, where, yeah. where, where the producer, it was an I, over ISDN, and I was doing a commercial uh, for a hospital, and the producer said, do you do a lot of narration? I said, yeah. And he said, well, your, your diction is just way too good for this commercial. Just rough it up. <laughs> just rough it up a little bit. Just sound like a rough guy, it. you know? Sounds good. So yeah. now... Everybody, uh, I, I really appreciate your being on this particular webinar. We very much look forward to working with everyone who signs up to give them very specific answers to very specific questions. And I think that for most people, I mean, I'm looking at this as an outsider, and for many of you, I don't know if you know this, but I recently, as a result of working with Bill, decided to buy a microphone and get started. And to me at least, you know, I think that spending $100 a month to be able to get answers to questions as they come up and whether it's performance or marketing or equipment or whatever is going to be the best hundred bucks a month you can spend. I mean, I'm looking at that seriously as if if I were, you know, wanting to get into the business and without having you as a person I could call on my own, uh, this would be a really, really good way to do it. So again, folks, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you can try it, cancel it any time. Bill, any other thoughts about the whole process we're going to be doing? No, it's just, you know, you need to know what you need to know, you know, when you need it. So it'll be a great way to, you know, collect things that come up, issues, and you know that every two weeks we're going to be talking about those things. So, you know, you'll never have to wait an extremely long amount of time. And then it can be relevant and current to your situation. So I look forward to it. And, you know, I hope you'll be a part. And if not, I, you know, that, that I do wish you all the best. Uh, yeah. But, if you, you know, it, it would be fun being a part of your success and, building, and helping to build your career.